So oh, um, oh, either dear. it's A team not respecting SBT because the way they just played in those late game team fights, they certainly didn't have enough respect for Misaka and his boys. Um, but yeah, Battlefield of Eternity next to Dragonshire, without a doubt, one of the strongest home turfs that the Super Perfect team has available. This is affirmative. As we see the SBT with the first ban, immediately removing the Tracer, the A team. In terms of race potential, we might even see a Hanzo ban coming in here. If not, Solar Lane is always popular. Maiev just to avoid the team fights or the Mafia Rain being classic style. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what uh, the teams have in store here on uh, BOE. Let's see if we're going to see a Genji, perhaps. Genji priority for SBT. They do have the first pick after all. Maya, okay. I think that's going to be a Melody C Genji right there. I would agree, unless they want ZZH Mouth Fury. And I think both of which would be viable first picks. Those are the two I'm going to bounce between. Anything else would be a anything else would be a surprise on a scale of minor surprise, which results in a huh, two major surprise, which would result in a oh. What? <laughs> different different surprise levels yeah. of like how how surprised you are, the different reactions you get. Okay, so uh, you start with the impression of being mildly surprised. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna go with mediumly surprised. Huh. Oh. And what would happen uh, if we saw a Gazlo first pick here, Tetra? What would your reaction be? Seems to check. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Trixler would be proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> As we do see Genji, AK, okay, we don't get to use any of our surprised voices because this was one of the two things we actually expected. <laughs> yes. No surprises here. And keep an eye out for Melody C shenanigans when he uses the Genji to either... Go for the middle fountain. We've seen similar Genji um, trickster plays when going for one of the side fountains. Actually, you can go into into those little corridors, both in bottom and top lane, that we have on Battlefield of Eternity, and shoot your shurikens uh, over the terrain to hit the fountains, which is probably even sneakier than the middle one. The yeah, team starts off with a Jaina and a Diablo. I would be quite surprised if we do not see a Phoenix ban in the ban rotation. Or even SPT just pick it up straight away. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know what? I, I miss the good old Uther Genji days. It used to be Dang. so popular in China. They uh, would actually give up first pick on so many heroes just to get the Uther. You know what? I'm smelling it here. I'm just calling it. Uther here, right there. What, for SPT? Yeah. Damn it. No. Malfurion sticking with normal. So Malfurion's picked up. A team will ban out some kind of solo laner, probably something along the lines of Blaze, just to uh, remove some protection. Maybe Malfael. They might probably want Blaze actually, so that's why. Maybe the Roll is, also could be an option. Tetra, uh, I'm not sure if it's just me or if the numbers have my back on this, but um, I feel like we've been seeing a lot of Blazes lose uh, today. I'll find out for you. So um, I'm, at this point, I'm not even sure if you should pick just blindly a Blaze. Just pick it blindly, no matter what the enemy team has. True, I understand the value of Blaze's bunker, especially against those Maiev Wombo combos. But I'm not all too convinced anymore, you know? Um, I feel like there's so many other good bruisers, other good offlaners, like Thrall, like Sonya, Malthale, that I think should have higher priority sometimes. Even the Leoric, I would like to see more in the Dahaka. Today, just today, Blaze is one and three. See? Oh, wait, he was played last game. Wait, was he played last game? And it lost. Okay, so one and four. I uh, it knew something was odd today. I will count up yesterday as well. Um, that's two and four, two and five, two and six, three and six, three and seven. Yeah. He is a three and seven win rate in HTC China. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. I think some of the teams in China, they rely too much on what can be called a stale meta, right? A, a stale picks. You just pick Blaze because everybody picks Blaze and certain teams look good on it. Um, but you cannot always go for the same stuff. And if you end up going to the uh, mid-season brawl, to the Eastern Clash, to BlizzCon even, to all these international tournaments, other teams from other regions are going to punish you so hard because they analyzed your playstyle, your predictable playstyle. Um... But before we go deep into this matter, I think A-Team is probably not going to pick the Blaze here. I can't see the value. Um, 
up to this point. Depends, of course, on the picks of SBT. Yeah, I, th I... They don't have a... Neva team has a solo lane yet. Greymane can fill the solo lane, but he can also pick per uh, Cursed Bullet. Pursed Bullet. Um, but Cursed Bullet could be a problem for Blaze and Muradin. Yeah. So... Maybe to some a bit more race potential or a bit more poke potential. The Thrall could definitely fill that. And the Tyke is coming in just in case the A team decide to pick a Blaze or something similar. So every solo laner who could really do okay against a Thrall. Yes. Would I was gonna say is tanky. I forgot about Alarak. <laughs> um, Alarak, good on BOE. We've seen those. They're <laughs> celebrating. A team is very happy. I like it. But the spirits are they... high. Yeah. Um. They. I. They feel they won the draft. Okay. So. <laughs> let's find out if they're right. They certainly have a lot of burst. They definitely do have a lot of burst. They do have a lot of damage. Uh, damage in general. Uh, if you consider the immortal racing potential, which is always something to be on the lookout for in this map. I think they they are going to win by a large margin, you know? You have the Grey main. Many people seem to have forgotten about him, but BOE used to be one of his best maps. Then we have Karazin packing a punch with that Iron Fist. We have Jaina, not to be underestimated, good burst. So uh, what does, what does uh, SPT have? Thrall basic attacks, okay, they hit pretty hard. Tyke is... Yeah. Mm, and that's about it. The Odin it. Siege is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, I really dig the Alarak. It's very much, it's quite a high skill hero. Let's see if they can execute it as we are heading into game number two. Can SBT take the 2-0 and put themselves in first place along with the 1? Or will the A team be able to make it a 1-1 and continue to keep SBT out of the top five? Let's find out. With On the left, it is SPT with Lucky on Tychus, Mel DC on Genji, Misaka on Muradin, Soap on Thrall, and ZZH is playing the Mafira. Their opponent's currently down 0-1, looking for that tie that they need so badly. It is the A team with Jaina on Jaina or Lili on that Greyman. Bruiser's playing Alric this time. Then we have Stukov on Karzim and Uncle G is playing the main tank again on the Dibbles. Now, Diablo, not on Misaka this time. He didn't do so well in the Terrier last time. Misses the Stormball, quite uh, unusual for Misaka here. But let's not forget about Misaka and his Muradin. He used to be the hero that made him famous, you know, even in the international scene, uh, being absolutely yeah. legendary there. Stormball, two out of two, misses as well, unfortunately. And uh, all of a sudden, it's Olele and his boys from the A-Team that are turning this around. Yeah, like you said, I mean, I'm quite happy to see him back on the Muradin. It's good to see that he can still play, and it's not just a situation of he had a falling out with the hero or something. Yeah, yeah. Instead, we're seeing Diablo rotating up to the top lane, and it's not a Misaka doing it, because it is Uncle G. Yeah, of course, uh, SPT should now give the warning in comms, you know, we don't see Di Diablo, so uh, top lane, please. Uh, SS, as we learned, stay safe. We learned yesterday. We learned. Mm -hmm. We learn. Knowledge is power, and we know a lot. Exactly. So, uh, no deaths up to this point. Thrall managed to stay safe, but, you know, a, a lot of people seem to have forgotten how annoying an Alarak can be in a solo lane, right? He's normally played in the four-man yeah. now to enable those kills and strong rotations, but uh, the permanent lightnings that he's able to dish out from a safe distance with low mana cost and a low cooldown, it's going to drive... Uh, other soul laners nuts and crazy about it because it's so frustrating to play against. They found a good angle onto Lucky here. There's the damage Ooh. from Jaina picking up the first blood of the game. And this is where A-Team could sometimes play well. Yeah, Soap actually getting a really decent trade against Bruiser on the Alarek. Uh, even to the point where he forces his opponent to uh, take the healing fountain. Eight stacks on Thrall already for the Echo of the Elements. Once you complete that, you get a second charge off your chain a lightning if you're a mechanically skilled thrall player at level 16 you can go thunderstorm and crack out the damage really fast but you got to be skilled and uh you got to be lucky sometimes as well because if you land thunderstorm twice on the same hero your stacks are going to be reset which is quite annoying bruiser takes a bit of damage diablo interrupts Ooh. the dwarf toss Ooh. in comes the silence but there's not enough damage at this stage Unfortunately, not enough damage on a full HP Murden. The healing was also provided by Malfurion, of course. So 
So the bottom camp has already been dealt with uh, by SBT. Now both teams are rushing over towards the Fallen Shamans. You want to have the Fallen Shamans distract your opponents. You want to have them keep... Uh, you want to keep them busy while they're defending it. And then that gives you an opening to maybe get a head start in the Immortals. Interesting build coming in from this Alarak, starting off with the sustaining hmm. power, the extra healing. So it makes sense if you're in a solo lane. But then yeah. we're moving into, because we're not going for the extended lightning, we don't need negatively charged. So instead, we're sticking with Show of Force. AK of Alarak lands a full combo, then he's able to do a little bit of extra uh -oh. damage. Can't do that while he's dead, but for future reference. Yeah, looking good. Uh, unfortunately, Alarak chose the worst moment to, <laughs> to get ganked and... Uh, you know, taken down. So uh, that should be a relatively easy halftime show for uh, SPT if they land maybe another CC combo. Melody C absorbing and deflecting most of the damage. Here comes Thrall with a flank, gets one double wolf, and Stukov ends up falling on the Karazim. He didn't have his Earth ally ready as an escape pod. So uh, yeah, two deaths, staggered deaths, because Alric was about to come back and rejoin the fray. And that means SPT is going to slice and dice their way to victory. Uncle G out of position you can stay there when you just lost your support and that's about it halftime show will diablo be back in time i think so maybe probably not he's gonna be a little late and they're on the offensive sides here yeah. so SBT should be able to burn this pretty quickly exactly without that much trouble we're gonna see a little bit of a race by the a team gonna try and burn down some of the shield at least they have gray main which will help fair amount jade even a little bit of burst being applied but nowhere near enough to win the race from half, obviously. But it's enough to drop the shield pretty low. Yeah, and it really shows you the power of A-Team's racing potential, right? Malfoy. They're for Malfoy, and that would be a nice dead. kill. There goes one. Mouth dead. Uncle G takes a little bit of damage from Melody C, though. And it doesn't look like they want to push further. They're just happy with picking up that kill. And who can blame them? Yeah, definitely takes a lot of uh, momentum away now from SBT without a support, but without a bruiser, without Alarag, they can't really defend that well. Nice health gain, and Melody C gets ultimately baited there. Baited by the High Lord, Whoa. by the right of Rakshir, you are baited. Make that a comic, <laughs> High, uh, Hot's High Lord. As we see Olele burning down this immortal with the help of Stukov and Jaina and Uncle G. This, will ta this tower will go down, but they protect everything else. All right, so uh, SPT doing a couple of favors over to the A-Team. I mean, they, they had the picture-perfect start, you know? They got a pretty healthy immortal, they killed a couple of dudes, but then gave a couple of kills over to the A-Team as well. That enabled them to defend very handsomely. Look at that top lane, not even touching the fort now, the immortal that was. Uh, no support, and then no Ganjo. Uh, quite, uh, quite, quite good here for the A-Team. They managed to get those kills very nicely at the nick of time. That is diabolical momentum coming in for Diablo here. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. Could he be going for the double flip build? Uh, no auto attack sustain, so not go certainly not going all in on an auto attack build. But still, he's gone for the healing on crowd control ability. So if he does go for double flips, then that could work out. Yeah, Diabolical Momentum, uh, ever since the rework, the most recent rework on Diablo, hasn't really seen a lot of plays, right? It's usually Eternal Flames, sometimes Malevolence, uh, but uh, this one we haven't really seen that much. Uh, yeah. Thrall now fully stacked. Nicely done. That's going to be fantastic. Once, like you said, he can then get Thunderstorm later on and get even more damage. Nice little stun onto Olele. Once again, very far forward, but Stukov's in position to keep him alive. His Uncle G just wait for it, just straight up tackles Misaka. But the cleanse keeps him out of danger. Yeah. Now the anti-healing once again uh, at the ready. Uh, very important to keep track of that one for the Malfurion, uh, who chose it at level 4, I believe. There shouldn't be any other anti-healing mechanics in the team uh, of SPT. For now, the Immortals have spawned. No level 10 in sight. Uncle G going in aggressively. They have their own Immortal, of course, backing them up here. Diablo getting focused and taken out immediately, though. Melody C able to escape very barely, though, with that kill. So he's a little bit low. Going to have to wait for Mafiorin to heal him mm -hmm. back up again before he can attempt to go back in safely. I mean, he can attempt to go back in whenever he likes. Olele again gets Beautiful. caught. We see a little bit of damage from Stukov, able Ooh. to get the counter kill there. Diving straight onto that thrall, but trying to follow up to help Bruiser instead. gets immediately turned on by Misaka and becomes a casualty himself. These kills remind me a little bit of these uh, 
uh, Taronda Muradin blow-up combos that we had, with the exception that there's no Taronda, but her husband Malfurion now in the mix, because every single time we've seen Muradin going for that Stormbolt, and there was immediately a follow-up at Tangling Roots, and that target just got popped in on the side of A-Team. So SBT with clean engages and clean focus fire. Can they get another uh, Immortal? I think they will be able to get it, but Luke... Once again, look at that strong racing potential. The Grayman, the Jaina, the Alric. They're racing like there was no tomorrow. Zuck, by the way, fully stacking his Storm Bolts. So getting mm -hmm. there pretty quickly. Only person faster is himself. As we see Misaka gets seven sided, gets the avatar though, lightning oh! grab egg strike on everyone. It's not good. The piercing stun as well from Misaka gets both of them. And the bruiser taken out to full team wipe. And uh, the mandatory camera zoom after a full team wipe. We love China and we love the action that it brings to you and us. Now, let's take a look at that again. The seven-sided escape so close by Misaka. And then they're lining up the roots, hitting the entire enemy team. There came the earthquake as well by Thrall. Genji with a perfect XD strike on five members, I think. Four or five members it hit for sure. And that was basically lights out then for the A-Team, just in time for the Immortal. It's not going to be the strongest and healthiest of Immortals, but the Tigers didn't even have to use the Odin. They're now going to have another strong sieging tool at their disposal. They're using the Odin now for the siege, like you said. Due to it being up, they're going to take down the tower easily, and luckily, though, the shield's pretty low, so the A-Team will clear that up pretty quickly. So the Immortal goes down now. It's just about the minion waves, as Lucky didn't really do that much siege damage, just really poked a fountain a bit. Yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful stuff coming there, coming out there by SBT. They really seem to know how to basically manage their lead this time. They're not really giving the A team any more kills than they need to right now. Uh, most importantly, Misaka stays alive. It was very close though on that previous team fight because the seven sided was almost perfect on point. But here comes the invade. Careful, the ring is good though. Misaka into the back line, bullying Jada, who is currently alive, but Melly C picks up the kill and over the wall. See you later. Twilight Dream oh. picking up another two kills. Let's make it three for good measure, because they can. I was about to say maybe they can't, but because they can't, uh, still got <laughs> that D Didn't Genji get there an uh, another reset on his E? It must have been just barely out of timing, otherwise he could have actually chased after the... A, I don't think he got a kill with his E. He x striked and then leapt over the wall. Mm, yeah, maybe maybe that would have been nice otherwise. But as it is, great save by A team. Basically, Alrek and Karazim helping each other out. Uh, it's now a pretty substantial lead on the side of SBT, 14 to 11. And uh, BOE is not known to be the map in which you can collect and gather, you know, the most experience because it's only a two lane map. And there's only so many ways you can go. LDC and Misaka with the help of Lucky and CZH doing the mercenary camp here. 14 seconds until the next Immortal is going to be spawning. And there is nowhere near enough experience left for A-Team to even get 13. So I think they're going to do what they did in first game. They're just going to keep on fighting. Uh, not minding the, yeah. the talent tiers. I think they're just going to go ham again. I, I, I think you're right. I don't like it. They we're not endorsing it, but we think that's not what's going to happen. Mijit's done onto Alarak, but he's alive this time. Moving on to Muradin, Misaka tanking though, X-Strike, and they're all going to die again. Goes the ring, capturing two people. Bruiser's not low, bad. lands a lightning here. Diablo actually ends up falling. He's the first one, second, third. It's a triple kill, and uh, at this point, I think it's safe to say that the A-Team is just running it down. I mean, <laughs> there's so yeah. many ways you can do it. You can just pressure the fort in the top lane. You actually took the mercenary camp for exactly that purpose. You can defend at the bottom, let them have the first 50%, make them waste time and catch up this way. But to engage on a Muradin over and over again, Uncle G, that is not the way you do it. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what to say about this at this point. A team, they just you you they just keep running in. They take so many fights that just aren't necessary. Misaka actually missed his storm bolt a little bit there. Could have hit two here. He's hit one. Yeah. But still enough to detonate several people. I'm honestly quite surprised the A team lived had more than two members live. I thought all of them would die. <laughs> yeah, and you know you've hit rock bottom when you consider that to be a success. Um, yeah. Great success. Uh, have a trophy. You didn't all die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> encouragement. Odin's dropped. Look at this. Just safe play. There's no reason for them to try and fight mm -hmm. the, the A-Team right now. They're closer to the 16. And the thing is, 
just a 13, they can just grab this from a distance. E even if they if they lost the Zermorl, which they're going to do anyways, look, it would go top lane. You know, you still have a fourth there. There's no way it would even take a key, but there they go again. The A team is going in. Can they do it this time around? They lose the Gramian, but at least they get the Malfurion. But here comes the retaliation move by SPT. Make it a triple. Only Jaina and Stukov left alive. But they killed Malfurion, and that whole Jaina being alive thing might be a past tense. Oh. And the Stukov is a past tense. Merly C picks up the double. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves some staggered deaths. Get the globes. <laughs> nearly, very nearly missed the globes. Like you said, staggered deaths. Still 21 seconds until the Karazim is alive. And yeah. This is going to be a fort, very maybe a keep. Okay, here it goes. And that's what I was talking about earlier, is right? If this immortal was in a top lane. There was still a fort, there's still an entire keep wall. Why in the world does A team go like they played with two keeps down? Like they played like they had two keeps down already, and the next immortal would be GG's, anyways. Then I would uh, understand the moves and the playstyle they have. But as it is, once again, they engage on the Murden. Bisaka is baiting it every single time. He ends up falling, though. Yeah, he does actually go down, and uh, no one from the A-team is dead yet. Seven-sided, a little bit off-center, which allows them to not move it, uh, allows everyone to back up from it. Silence on Mal, Jaina, damage, and Genji. Huge chunk of damage, but very risky huge chunk of damage. Soap, also in trouble. Ring of is dodged. X-Strike is ready, and Genji is picking everyone up time after time. And unfortunately, it looks like that SB, the SBT able to push through the keep. The A-Team apparently being coached by Douglas Haig at this point, as they are just funneling in and being taken out. Yeah, beautiful play. Uh, Melody C is having a field day here. He's having a good time. He's enjoying himself. You can definitely uh, see that here. But hey, can't blame him when you have that many uh, crash test dummies, I want to call them at this point, unfortunately, uh, without being too disrespectful here. But the A-Team showed us a very, very weird approach to how you play on BOE. They should really take this moment to analyze the replay and be like, when do we need to commit? When do we have to go fully all in? And when is it wiser to maybe go for a stall game? Can we go for other objectives in the meantime? Because that certainly didn't work out twice in a row. That is true. 